going on, people? We back at it again. Gen Sports Corner back at you for November 27th, 2022. Sunday night football, Eagles, Packers, 8.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know what time it is. Before I get into it, make sure you like, subscribe, smash that notification bell. You know the rest, man. It, it, it helps the channel. We're going to get into it, man. We're going to give a breakdown on the matchups in this game. <clears throat> We're going to do a little bit of film study here and there. And then put my thoughts on on who's going to win this game. So you got A-Rod coming into Philly. And he, he was trying to get a win, man. They're they're treading water. They're trying not to fall too, too far behind. Packers at 4-7 and seven coming into play. The 91 Eagles at the link. Eagles favored by 7 points. The money line is minus 333 in the Eagles' favor. And then the over-under is 46.5 points. So, with the spread being 7 points, Vegas is guessing that the Eagles are going to probably win 30-16 to 16 or somewhere in that ballpark. <clears throat> and uh, one of the predictions here I see is 27-19. to 19. So, that's, that's the feeling that a lot of the, the analysts have for this game. But I want to go into it and talk about the matchups and what's going to go down here. So first things first, the Eagles need to stop the run early and often. Don't let their run game, which is decent, do any damage whatsoever. It's the reason we signed Sue and Joseph and they had the impact they had last week. And we need that to carry over into this game. So you can see the stat sheet right here. The Eagles, their their defense is giving up 122.2 rushing yards per game which is 19th in the league and then the Packers rushing attack they're running for a buck 22.6 yards per game which is 14th in the league so they're right on par with what they get versus what we give up however I think we're going to be a little bit better and that's the first thing that we need to nip in the bud because obviously they can't do shit when it comes to passing the ball so once you stop that run they're going to be front they're going to be done so that that's that's a big part and then secondly you got to look at okay once we had them start on offense what are we doing for our part on offense to be able to keep the chains moving which was a problem in that Colts game last week time and time again the Eagles were not able to convert on third down and they were getting kicked off the field over and over and over again and it took until the fourth quarter for them to have any bit of consistency so going into this game against the Packers, they're going to have to clean that up. And you can see right here, rushing yards per game, we're sixth in the league. A buck 42.4 on the ground. And then the Packers, they're horrible with their run defense. They're even worse than the Eagles have been in the previous six, seven, eight games. They're giving up a buck 35.8 on the ground, which is good for 25th in the NFL. They're not good at all against the run which is going to set you up better on third down because you're going to have a lot of third and shorts, which is what I'm going to actually get into in the film study coming up. But this this pass defense for the Packers is very good. They're sneaky good. They throw a lot of disguises. They have some little tricks in, in, of the trade from like the Fangio, the uh, <clears throat> Vic Fangio coaching tree. So you don't want to get into third and long against them as will be witnessed in this footage that I'm going to break down from the Packers versus the Dallas Cowboys. But you want to be able to run the ball early and really wear them out and get yourself in good situations on third down. Because as you can see, the Eagles are good converting third downs at a 46.5% clip. But you want to make sure you're in those good uh, positions. So let's take a little bit of a look at some of the uh, footage from the Packers-Dallas game. And this is one uh, concept from that game it's called smash drive so you can see in this play call how everything's set up to the right side of the field where the cowboys are trying to flood one side of the field and overwhelm the defense so you have tony pollard coming out into the flat near the 40 yard line and then you have the wide receiver at the bottom of the screen who i think might be cd lamb running a nine route a go route straight up the field and then you have schultz running up to about the 48 yard line and then cutting right out to the sideline at an angle so you have three level you have two levels of stress on the defense and then you have a crossing route from the receiver near the top of the field who's in the the stacked part of the formation who's going to run an intermediate route so you have three levels of stress that are going to be put on the defense on the right side of the field so that's especially good for cover two cover three 
I mean, it's, it's, it's a really great concept. But you're going to see how this Packers defense was able to counteract what they were trying to do and some of the great things that they really thought of here. So you look at their defensive coordinator, uh, Joe Barry. He, he runs a lot of too high coverages, and you're going to see that on this play. You're going to see a too high man coverage, but he does uh, a little bit of a funky twist on, on this here. So the, and these are on third, third downs here. So this is a special formation. It's called, it's a nickel formation, but they have three safeties here. So the slot cornerback, instead of being a cornerback, is a safety. So you see the safety subbed in and they're playing man across the field. So you have the top cornerback, the first out, he's a cornerback. The first in is the safety who's playing the nickel. And then at the bottom of the screen, I believe that's Jair Alexander, he's playing man coverage with an inside shade against the bottom receiver and then you look at a little twist that they put on this man cover two shell you look at the free safety he's covering the half of the field and then the strong safety he's only play, playing a quarter of the field so the half of the field is to the strong side which is where the stack is at with, his, with the top two wide receivers and then the strong safety is playing quarters coverage against the weak side of the field which only has one wide receiver and then the tight end who is not flexed out he's sitting right on the line i, I guess you can consider that flexed out but he's he's not really that far off from the line right so they they really have this deed up pretty well and you're going to see this in the next frame as this whole sequence plays out as Schultz and the bottom wide receiver run down the field you're going to see I believe that's Jair Alexander and then their <clears throat> the defender on Schultz they they play inside leverage and they're just keeping everything in front of them they're not letting anything pass them if anything possibly gets by them the quarters coverage is going to be right on them using the the sideline as a 12th man so Schultz, there's really nothing there when when Dak is looking for that out route against the inside defender. And what ends up happening is he he throws this and it's incomplete. Like it's it's the timing's all off. It's it's just a mess. And that's that's what happens when you're able to disguise a play pretty well with simple concepts. There's not very anything that's very complicated you're keeping it simple for your defense however you're giving just a little wrinkle here and a little wrinkle there that's just throwing off the timing just ever so slightly on a third and long and this might have been a third and six in the first quarter but just those little subtleties slow changes in the plays they make all the difference we're going to look at another play that the Cowboys tried in this game on another third down here. So it was a third and six here later in the first quarter. And this is what's called a dagger concept. So you have an outside receiver running up about 10 to 15 yards and then running an in route to the middle of the field. And then you have a tight end and, or a slot receiver who, who's flexed out in the slot running a go route, boom, straight up the field. So you're looking to clear out the defenders with the go route and then the in route with the outside receiver should be open. And then the last read, which would be your, I guess your dagger route would be, you'll see in the frame CD Lamb, he's supposed to break outside and that's your last read. And then they had an answer for this. They, they threw something different at them on third down this time. So instead of a cover to uh, sh a man shell, they came with a three deep shell and they had three guys in the zone underneath and it, it did a really good job of throwing Dr. Prescott off. So he's trying to work this dagger concept. He wants to hit that seam route, but the safety and the cornerback, they close it off immediately. And then you have 26 sitting here in the middle of the field and he's going to be lurking. You see the bottom wide receiver. He's going to take away this dagger route. He's going to take that right out. So now that cannot go there. He reads that and says, oh, snap. I don't want to throw into any traffic. And then the last thing left is the return route, which is locked up pretty well by uh, number seven here, the defender. I think that's CeeDee Lamb. And then that, that turns into nothing. So that's another third down that is wiped out. You're going to fourth down and you're punting the ball. So you force uh, an incompletion with a check down and then you move on. So th th these little nuances that 
the, the Packers are paying attention to and the way they're able to get off the field on third down, which, like I mentioned before, they've been good at all year, the Eagles are going to have to be prepared for this. So lastly, I want to go through one more concept that the Packers have kind of shown on film on defense that the Eagles have to be looking out for. You look at this play call here, it's called 989 Double Go. Very simple concept, no smoke and mirrors, but very effective. So you see the two outside receivers running go routes straight up the field. And then you see the slot receiver, which should be CD Lamb. He's running right up the seam. And then depending on the coverage, he can adjust his route. So if it's cover two, a, a nice shell that he's gonna run it right up. He's gonna run diagonally right up the middle, almost like a post. But if it's cover one, cover three, he's going to cross the safety's face and almost running an in route. So he's gonna cross the safety's face and then be wide open. So it's an adjustable route, boom. Now what's interesting, what the Packers did here, they ran what's called a nickel Brooklyn look and it's a Tampa 2 robber look. So instead of just a regular Tampa 2 shell where you have both safeties covering the half of the field, one half on the left, one half on the right, and you have the two cornerbacks pressing up in like a cloud or a hard flat and then the linebacker playing like a hook zone in the middle in this case you have the safety in this look playing a deep um, a deep zone down the middle so it's almost like a robber look so what what is really unique about what they did here is pre-snap they showed a look that made it seem as though it was uh one high safety whether that's cover one or or cover three they made they get they showed a one high safety look and then right before the ball was snapped you seen the um the the safety rotate out as if he was going to run back into his zone so he goes into his deep quarters down the field and then the free safety now he goes into that robber responsibility so they did a very good job of disguising it. That Prescott might have looked at the free safety and thought he was going to go into the deep half when in reality he was going into that robber spot. So CD Lamb runs up to about the 47 yard line and instead of crossing the safety's face, which he should have done, he runs diagonally. And now this hook zone in the middle, this robber look, he's going to run up and be in perfect position to just put his Madden ball hawk on and just pick this ball off. And that's exactly what happens here. So CD Lamb bends up the field, up the middle of the field in this route, thinking it's cover two, but it's a robber look. And he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. And you can see on the all 22 right here, it's just no good. And boom, interception. So they're going to have to be very mindful of these little wrinkles that the Packers are going to throw in there. And then lastly, they're going to have to get pressure on Aaron Rodgers. And they can't block with the shit this year. They've been having problems getting open on the outsides, beating cornerbacks one-on-one. -on -one. So you have one of the best cover corners in the league, Darius Slate. He's going to be in your, in, inside your hip pocket, running your routes for you. And you're really going to have to have the savvy and the know-how to be able to get away from him, which I don't think any of these receivers have. So that's going to be an issue. And then two, this defensive line, they're going to be winning the one-on-one -on -one matchups, which every other team has been doing this year against the Packers. So I see Aaron Rodgers having a pretty rough time against this front four. Teams have stopped blitzing Aaron Rodgers this year because they know that the wide receivers can't win their one-on-ones on the outside. And they know that the linemen are getting beat in the one-on-one -on -one matchup. So... This is why I believe that the Eagles match up very well defensively against this Packers team. And even more so because they got Sue and Joseph. And I think that has helped to shore up some of the run defensive woes so far. So if you're not able to run the ball at least effectively against the Eagles, I think they're going to have a rough time. And I don't see this Packers team being able to stop the run very well. So with that in mind, I see the, the Eagles winning this game. I think that they cover the spread of seven points. And I see them coming out with a dub on Sunday Night Football. Uh, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think that um, there were things in the film footage that I covered that 
work in the Packers' favor, or do you think the Eagles will have answers for that? Do you think that A-Rod will be able to step up and continue to keep up the positive momentum he's had in the past uh, one or two games, or do you think that he's going to fall back into a rough patch? Let me know what you guys think, and hey, go Birds, enjoy the games. I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving, and let's end out this weekend with a bang. Catch you on the next one. Peace.